The difference between good artists and great artists is not how well they paint, but what they choose to paint. Hey, hello, how do you do? Shady Do Rags here. I've been doing all these reviews on these mainstream shows. I think it's about time I finally did something from The Boondocks. Yeah, that play on words doesn't even work, but guys, you don't understand. I have to make puns or life won't have any meaning for me. The Boondocks has been on my radar for quite some time. We have both the career and skin pigmentation that I do. Something like this is bound to get a lot of requests. The show is about the Freemans, a black family that recently received a major upgrade to their housing situation. There is Huey Freeman, the intelligent older brother who's also hyper paranoid to the point that he's a terrorist. Here is the survival plan. It contains guidelines for security, food and water rationing, energy usage, communications, etc., etc. There's Riley Freeman, the younger brother who embraces every black stereotype he can find. Did she just call me a thug? She sure did. Yeah. And there's the two boys guardian, Robert Freeman, AKA Granddad, an old man who's trying to live out the rest of his days in peace. You'll be happy to know that Michelle, Sasha, Malia, myself, and Bo, are all fine. Don't nobody care about you, man. Tell us everything will be okay for us. After Robert became the boy's legal guardian and received responsibility for their inheritance, he used his newfound wealth to move him and his family to an upper-class, predominantly white neighborhood. For those of you who don't get it, the title, The Boondocks, is a pun. Something being in the boondocks is slang for it being so far out of the way that it's really difficult to find. For example, if someone parks far away from the entrance of a store, one might say, why did you park all the way in the boondocks? The play on words, however, comes from the fact that boondocks is usually referencing the ghetto or a really underdeveloped area. The irony here is that the Freemans going to a rich white neighborhood is so far from their old lifestyle, both literally and figuratively, that from their perspective, they're now living in the boondocks. The show as a whole is a commentary on America, usually focusing on the black community. Sometimes it would criticize how society is being treated, while other times it would target society's actions or the actions of an individual in relation to society. However, between the Martin Luther King speeches and jokes about going crazy over chicken, there was one specific episode that immediately jumped out as something I wanted to explore. Riley was here. The episode starts with Riley spray painting a house in the middle of the night. When he's done, he gets caught by somebody who doesn't seem to understand his message. It says Riley was here. You're Riley, I presume? Yeah. Hey, Riley. It sure is super to meet you. Hello, person who smiles a lot and appeared in the middle of the night. You're not creepy at all. The mysterious afro stranger gives Riley some pointers on how to better get his message across. It takes until dawn, but the two do manage to eventually get it down. Soon after, however, the owner comes out of the house and he's none too happy about the spray paint, which leads to trouble for Riley. It wasn't me! It says Riley was here. Riley, graffiti is a serious crime. This is Tom. Hi, Hi Tom. Tom. He's a reoccurring character, but he's not very important to this episode, so we're gonna ignore him for now. But a white man told me to do it. I just assumed he was in charge. Why? Cause he was white. <laughs> hey, yo, Riley, stop snitching. What did this white man look like? Who do I look like? Snitchy McGrath? I don't talk to police. Oh, he actually stopped. What I like about Riley is while he definitely isn't the deepest character in the show, he's got a few layers if you pay attention. I don't agree with them, but he does have some principles and he does stick to them. No matter what, the dude won't snitch to cops. Also, he's definitely the funniest Freeman. So Granddad, after offering to pay for the damages, comes up with a three phase punishment for Riley. The first phase is one a lot of black folks know all too well. Come here. Phase two? Well, we'll get to phase two in a minute, but first we gotta go over the B story right quick. Huey wants to find out if television targeted towards black folks has any significant effect on them, so he arranges an experiment to watch nothing but black television for two weeks. Huey is affected, but he doesn't notice the changes. Throughout the episode, we see him become lazier while ignoring his dietary needs, which isn't like Huey at all. I'm supposed to be checking my blood pressure, but gotta use this thing. It ends with him being immediately fixed with some educational television, but never personally noticing the difference. While the scenario is funny, the commentary is extremely on the nose. Back to Riley, phase two of his punishment is having to repaint over his work while being watched by... You call that art? Michelangelo have been black. Jesus would look like George Jaffa. You know him, you love him, but he's not very prominent in this episode, so I'll have to give my appreciation to Uncle Ruckus some other time. Phase three of Riley's punishment is to give him art lessons. Granddad, I'm sorry. I don't want art lessons. Well, maybe if you learned to draw on paper, you wouldn't be drawing on people's houses. 
Riley's punishment as a whole is actually something I really appreciate. It goes through what I believe to be three important elements of dealing with troublemakers, aversive stimuli, atonement, and channeling inspiration. The spanking Riley received was the aversive stimulus. Riley did something, and as a result, something bad happened to him, more than likely making him hesitant to try it again. Repainting the house is Riley atoning for his crime, with the point being to fix the damage that he had done. Doing this teaches the hard work others have to go through when you disrupt their lives. And now, Riley's being taken to an art class so he can channel whatever sparked him into spray painting in the first place into something productive. All three of these punishments can be used as a deterrent for future bad behavior, but usually I see parents in TV shows only focusing on one. The problem with that is every child is different and there's no guarantee which strategy will work. For example, an adverse so stimulus might just make it so the child will be more careful about being caught, or maybe channeling is ineffective because the inspiration isn't activity related. Giving Riley all three types of punishments not only increases the odds of him learning his lesson, but also allows for anyone monitoring him to see which one is most effective on him specifically. I mean, that's not what the episode does, but I appreciate it being there anyway. So Riley goes to his first lesson, and who should he find there but, uh, they never say this guy's name. Well, he's the boss of Riley now, so I'm just gonna call him boss. I got in trouble cause of you. I thought it was your house. <laughs> in his practice of being a habitual liar, Riley legitimately forgot he spray painted the house before he met boss. But you'll find I don't really believe in mistakes. I believe in happy accidents. Because you got in trouble, your granddad hired me. This sounds like a scam. Also, you're not helping your creepiness factor. Boss can see that Riley doesn't want to be in the class, so he makes a deal with him. All Riley has to do is draw one thing and he's allowed to leave. Riley makes the drawing and is about to take off, but as he tries to leave... <laughs> what? Oh, nothing. <laughs> you're free to go. I wasn't really trying. I could do better if I wanted. Oh, I'm sure. Ooh! Oh, I felt that. Hey, you ain't got to ball it up and throw it in the trash. Let's give a round of applause to Regina King on that voice cracking. Riley is about to cry and I don't blame him. When he gets home, Riley has a new determination about him, looking up art he can use later. He goes back to his art class with a new scheme in mind. Yeah, throw this away. But you didn't draw this. Yes, I did. I don't think you did. You got this off my website. Boss tells Riley that he thinks Riley can draw something even better than his own work. Riley doubts himself, so Boss just tells him to phone it in like he did last time. This angers Riley, who sits down to do the assignment. Finished? No, man! Stop sweating me! I mean, can I draw? Congrats, Riley! You've been successfully reverse psychology -ed. After seeing Riley put in legitimate effort, Boss decides that his student is ready to move up to bigger and better things. He offers to help Riley use his newfound focus to tag a house. This goes completely against what Robert wanted, but Boss seems more interested in bringing out Riley's inner artist than deterring his vandalism. So, do you know what you want to paint? I want to paint Scarface shooting at like 15 Colombian drug lords. That sounds really violent. I don't like violent things. Too bad this ain't your drawing. Boss convinces Riley to explore himself and paint something others wouldn't expect from him. After they complete the work, Riley attempts to sign it, but Boss stops him. If anyone finds out what we're doing, I won't be able to teach you art anymore. At a certain point, the creepy statements speak for themselves. An artist who has done his job well doesn't need to sign his name. So I get what he's saying, however, I would have phrased it as there are different ways of signing a piece of art than just one's name. Conversation starter, who's an artist you can recognize immediately when seeing their work? I've been told I'm pretty good at recognizing voice actors. The next day, the neighbors all admire the new spray painting job. Considering the work has quality and is so different from what Riley did, none of them believe him to be the culprit. Riley, hoping to hear praise for his work, talks to Granddad about the graffiti. Did you see that painting on the Franklin's house? Not that I had anything to do with it. Of course you didn't have anything to do with it. Stevie Wonder can see you didn't have anything to do with it. Oh, well, that's the second time I felt Riley's pain. Is this episode succeeding in making me feel bad for this little punk? I think it is. In class, Riley and Boss discuss their next project. I'm very excited about tonight, Riley. Let's paint a picture of someone you love. Maybe someone who's not with us anymore. Uh, Ixnay on the Ed Day? That's gotta be a pretty sensitive subject given. You mean like a fallen soldier? 
Never mind, that didn't at all go the way I thought it was going to. Yet. That night, the two get to work again, and Riley takes more and more pride in his creation. Are you sure I can sign this one? I don't care if I get in trouble. This is in contrast to the beginning where, despite literally signing his name, Riley was denying he had anything to do with his creation. Riley decides that instead of signing his actual name, he'll use an alias. The next day, however... Is that a signature? It's many signatures. Riley was already on the brink with no one knowing he was the creator, but seeing others take credit for his work, just like he took credit for Boss's work earlier, pushes him over the line. Now, I know this is gonna come as a huge surprise to everyone, but I'm the artist. <laughs> Why on earth is this not a meme? It's just begging to be one. Riley tries since he's the artist, but not only is he mocked, Robert punishes him for lying. Well, why can't I paint it the walls? Why can't I be a talented artist? Boy, you ain't even a talented vandal. Wow. Wow. I'm genuinely speechless. With that comment, Riley is done. He forms a plan that will make sure everyone, especially Granddad, will know what he can do. You're sure you want to do this? Yes, but I need help. So Boss helps Riley with his magnum opus. The two are able to finish up, but right as they do, the cops show up. There's a chase scene and Boss does some slick card tricks and pulls out a gun and blah, 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 who cares? What did Riley wind up painting? It's so beautiful. Thank you, boy. Again, I'm speechless. This is such a powerful moment, and correct me if I'm wrong, I believe it's the only time the show acknowledges that these two people ever existed. You can start cleaning it off now. But what? No buts. Start drawing on paper and this wouldn't happen. And that was Riley Was Here. I'm still on the fence about it, but this might just be my favorite Boondocks episode. I love the lessons it teaches about art, and their use of boss was fun, even if in setting he's absolutely creepy. There's a lot to be said about knowing your audience well enough to surprise them with your work, but still letting them know it was you who did it without directly saying so. What I absolutely love about this episode, though, is the approach to Riley. Before this, I despised Riley. Yeah, he had some funny lines, but he seemed to do nothing but cause problems for other characters. However, one thing I've always believed in is that everyone, no matter who they are or what they've done, has value value they can contribute to the world. And this episode helps push that narrative. Where most looked at Riley and saw a troublemaker, Boss looked at him and saw an aspiring artist who needed to hone his talents. Now, of course, I don't approve of the whole spray painting people's houses shenanigan, but the episode never says that was a good thing. In fact, the last few seconds emphasize that Riley could have gotten the same recognition he was craving in a less troublesome way. It is a shame that this is a situation where continuity gets forgotten. I would have liked to have seen other episodes of Riley furthering his artistic skills. All in all, I think this episode does a good job of demonstrating how, with the right guidance, motivation, and focus, someone can be inspired to turn their troublesome antics into something worth admiring. This has been Shady Durags. So long. Farewell. I have you to say. Goodbye. <laughs>